Hey everybody, this is Matt and this is Grant and welcome to Stoke Your Passion. Um, we are getting really stoked to go on, nice, nice pun, right? Yeah. yeah. We're getting really excited <laughs> to go on this uh, odd ad hunt in New Mexico in just a couple days. And as such, we were putting together our packs and going through our gear list together and we decided, hey, you know what might be useful is to uh, show everybody what we're going to take in our packs, what kind of packs we're using, what kind of stuff. I mean, even Torn is excited going to kind of talk to you about what we're doing and uh, our pack stuff and Grant take it away. Yeah so essentially this hunt's going to be we're going to be car camping so we'll have a solid base camp set up that we can work out of um, and then it'll be day hunts back in these canyons. Um, it's pretty dry country so you know you'll see we're going to reflect that here. We are hunting Audad sheep or Barbary or Barbary sheep um, so we kind of scaled back some of the stuff that we normally take on an elk hunt or you know a backcountry mule deer hunt or something where you're dealing with a lot of meat. Okay, we're rolling. <laughs> All right, so we started getting our packs together and we realized, hey, we carry essentially the same like exact exa stuff. Like weirdly exactly the same thing. We might be twinsies, I don't know. <laughs> That's a word. This maybe sound cool. So, <laughs> anyway, we actually both carry Mystery Ranch packs. Um, those are just the packs that work for us. You can basically carry whatever you want as long as it'll do what you need it to do. Yeah, so. and and for us too, these packs are super versatile. So if you're day hunting, like we're gonna be doing, you know, these work great. Yep. You know, a couple nights, whatever it is, it's not a big deal. Out of some of their smaller packs. And then the frame is kind of what did it for me. Like being able to throw, you know, a third of an elk in here or a whole quarter or whatever it is and pack it out really with not too much adjustment, yeah. like just kind of sold me. It rides pack. super well. So um, anyway, you know, some, some very important things for this hunt that I wanted to, to pick out were definitely water hauling. <laughs> uh, yeah. We're going to want to carry like three to four liters of water per person at least per day. Next thing is uh, a, a good game bag. You know, if we kill, if we're fortunate enough to harvest an animal, you know, we can put those quarters or that boned out meat in a really good game bag and let it breathe. Mm -hmm. Another very important thing is having a good uh, emergency kit. These are pretty cheap backpacking kit. This is, uh, you know, it has like a, a day. It's like this is, has, you could use it up to four days. I mean, if you're lucky, you don't ever have to use it, but, um, also, I carry a couple pairs of nitrile gloves. Also, keep some in the in the medical kit here. Um, that keeps you safe, or safer. Let's put it that way from bloodborne pathogens, that sort of stuff. But also, if you have a missed stroke of your knife, sometimes that nitrile glove will protect your fingers. Uh, will glance off of that. And so, so I have a medical kit in mine as well, and I even go as far as to carry a tourniquet. Um, and some a couple of like light major trauma items just in case someone gets seriously hurt um, All the way down to like band-aids ibuprofen um, Just kind of that day-to-day, -day, you know nicks cuts blisters Whatever it is aches yep. and pains from being in the backcountry for a couple days having something like that can literally Not only save your life, but save your home. Yeah, and so you know I'm talking about camp comfort safety wet wipes that's all you need to say. <laughs> I also carry um, 50 foot of pretty thick paracord uh, for hanging uh, meat quarters and, and trees or whatever. Uh, just generally do whatever. You could even make a you could make a tourniquet out of it. You could, you know, it, it comes yeah. in handy for various Fix, different fixing reasons. broken buckles, whatever. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I always carry a headlamp with a backup little flashlight as well as uh, tons of extra batteries when I'm in the backcountry or just at the camp. Um, as well as I bring, I have this Goal Zero, which is underneath all this stuff. Um, it's, a, it's basically just a solar panel, so it's just uh, backcountry power for the most part. Um, some other stuff, uh, a Sharpie and a pen, a right in the rain pen, so when you do harvest that animal, you can, you can notch your tags, sign your tags. Um, I carry a Brunt and Compass as well, um, just for backcountry navigation. Um, as well as I have the Onyx maps on my phone. <clears throat> and then I carry two different knives. Um, maybe sometimes I carry a third, but I have a Havilon for, you know, you can do anything from caping to uh, gutting to quartering out your animal, boning out the meat. And then I just have a, a basically a standard caper, but 
you know, you can do about whatever. So how many you. extra blades do you like to carry with your Havilah? So the blades are super, are super uh, light. So I carry about six of them at a time. Yeah, that's about um, what I've got too. And then lastly, I carry uh, a couple titanium spoons and forks. And these things are like no weight at all. I mean, they almost float, but yeah. anyway. And then I have a, you know, keep, keep them together with a carabiner as well. So uh, cool. that's kind of some important stuff that I thought. Grant, awesome. You... Yeah, and so I have pretty much the same stuff in my bag, maybe a different brand or, or whatever. Um, but just kind of working through what I, what I like to carry. Um, I don't necessarily use them all the time, but a pair of tracking poles, like especially these ones are made by Black Diamond. And I've had them for a couple of years now, but especially if you're hauling meat or hauling in a big camp, whatever it is, it's nice to have that extra stability. Yeah. You know, it certainly saved my ankles more than once going over yep. whatever, or like saved me from getting wet on a river crossing or yep. whatever it is. Just steep from and rocky stuff. Steep and rocky, and nasty. Be like a, you'll be basically like a Barbary sheep yourself. Yeah, it's like a human. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we are going to carry a spotting scope on this one, so I bring a tripod, and uh, I have a Swarovski 60 millimeter um, objective lens on that one that I like. The cool thing about this Swarovski is you can hook your phone scope up to it, and you yep. can do it to most any um, spotting scope or rangefinder or binos, but he's got a super sweet so setup for that. Hopefully, we'll have a phone scoped, whatever, and I'm probably jinxing the whole thing. We'll have like close in, whatever, not even close in, but just what's on me all the time. Um, I carry a pair of binos in a chest harness, so they're always right there um, and easily accessible. I carry a wind indicator in there as well as well as a lens cloth. Um, and then hooked to the side, I keep my rangefinder with me just so it's handy um, and I can start to get a sense for like, all right, because you know you get in the backcountry or you get in a new place and you're like, I don't really understand my depth perception yep. here. It's hard to judge. Um, so I keep that with me. Then in my bag, you know, I kind of carry a, a junk bag, which has, I don't know if we can, you guys can see in here, but there's backup batteries for my rangefinder, backup batteries for my GPS, um, backup batteries, I carry two headlamps, a lighter, um, some toilet paper, cotton balls, hand sanitizer, both for cleaning up your hands, and it makes a great fire starter. Yep. Um, I've got a little bit of paracord in here as well. And then I actually carry broken shoe or not broken shoelaces, but I carry full shoelaces mm -hmm. with me because it's just super annoying yeah. to have to redo one of those. Yeah, absolutely. Um, going through it into the shooting stuff, um, I carry a rear rest. This is just an old sock with some airsoft pellets in it. <laughs> um, we talked about the rangefinder. I carry my Kestrel since we're going into new territory and I don't know the elevation or really what the atmospherics are going to be. It just Helps me, you know, calculate that extended range yeah, shot if needed. Plus, we're pretty certain that, you know, anytime you go hunting a Barbary sheep, it's probably going to be gonna an extended range. It's going to be a shot. So, yep. Um, so, I carry my bipod in my bag. And then what I've found works is I actually tie a pair of earplugs to my bipod legs. So that if I have time to use my bipod, it's just a good reminder of, you know, I definitely have time to protect my yep, hearing. Absolutely. If we're shooting big rifles. Yep. Um, especially what we're talking about here. Yep. Other than that, I do carry a true GPS. Um, I have my phone with me as well, but just in case a loss of satellite or, or excuse me, a loss of cell coverage, you have that satellite back up and at least can find your way home. Absolutely. So, so, yep. That's about it. So that's about it. That's what we found uh, that we carry in our packs that we feel are most important, especially for this type of, of hunt. If, anyway, we're excited uh, that you guys are following along and we're uh, extremely excited to go on this uh, odd ad hunt. So um, yeah, keep following along and we will update you on the odd ad hunt uh, you know, shortly. So yeah. thanks again. If you uh, like what we're doing here, click subscribe, follow along and uh, have some fun. So see you later. Cool, thanks for watching. <laughs>